Whether you're needing help with tractors or with trucks, this tutorial will help you out. We'll be covering everything from truck stations, including how to set up an autopilot route from your said vehicle. My name is the Valhalla Pickle, and this is the ultimate guide to trucks and tractors in Satisfactory 1.0. Starting off with the tractors, the price of this thing is relatively cheap compared to the truck. It costs you 5 modular frames, 5 rotors, and 10 reinforced iron plates. And despite its relatively cheap price, this is not a bad vehicle. This thing has 25 storage slots, and it can take a lot of fuel as well. Of course, you can use coal, which is actually rather important for this project. Not only does it have quite a lot of storage, but there's also a crafting bench tab that not many people utilize. The max speed of the tractor is 69 kilometers per hour, which is six kilometers slower than this behemoth of a machine. This is the truck. And as you can tell, it's far, far bigger than the tractor. And so is the cost of making it. This thing will set you back 15 motors, 20 encased industrial beams, 20 modular frames and 50 rubber. The reason as to why it costs more is because you unlock this later on in the game. And here's another size comparison. Again, this thing is rather big compared to the tractor. So as you'll expect, its storage is far greater. You can store 48 items inside of the truck, which is amazing. And of course, it can also burn coal for fuel. So now with the basics out of the way, I've set up a very quick demonstration on how to use the truck stations. And just because it's called a truck station, doesn't mean you only use it with trucks. This thing works with multiple vehicles, including the tractors, the trucks, the explorer, and also the factory cars. Here's the price of the truck station itself. It costs you 15 modular frames, 20 rotors, and 50 cable. Not bad, really. So in this example I've set up, what I want to try and do is transport 60 coal per minute through my truck station using a tractor. I will be using a tractor for this example so that newer players who have just unlocked the tractors can follow along at home. I then want to drive up the road to that truck station and deliver the coal into this storage container. And obviously for this example, we're not really going that far from our original truck station, but I'd like to show you where the final destination is just so it's easier to understand what exactly we are doing. I don't necessarily recommend making trucks if you're only gonna go about 50 meters. It's not really worth it. Regardless, what we want to do is connect our belts to the entrance here. And you can see there are three different entrances. Two of these entrances are made your product, of course, you've got a cord coming in, and we've got two outputs as well, so two inputs, two outputs. To elaborate, if you use a Mark 6 belt, of course you're going to get items in and out a lot quicker than a Mark 1 belt. So make sure that you keep an eye on this, the maximum transfer rate and the outgoing transfer rate, because if you've got too many items coming into here, and not enough tractors or trucks picking it up, you're then going to have an overflow, which you don't really want. It means that this is not efficient. So this is all working fine. However, let's talk a bit more about this. Trucks, tractors, and pretty much every single vehicle in the game except for trains needs some sort of fuel. So what I recommend doing, if you are collecting coal, all you have to do is just add a splitter here, and then have a belt coming into the fuel area. But again, almost all types of fuel works. Let's say that you're not collecting coal, and instead, this is iron. How on earth do you fuel this up when you've only got trucks or tractors unlocked, and you can't get drones from just to, to fly from one place of the map to the other? Well, there's something else you can do. You could place a truck stop right next to another truck stop, except the one that you place down next to it only accepts inputs, and then you have one truck or tractor going around your map or a portion of the map, delivering coal to those truck stations. Then what that then does is unload it from one truck station and put it into another. And there is a reason why you can't just do it all in one station. That is because of this. You have to set your stations to either an unload or a load. A load means that you are gathering resources from here to then put into this thing. Whereas an unload means that you are unloading from a truck or tractor into this to then get used on the other side, which is exactly what we'll be doing 
just down the road. Because this is dealing with an input, we want to set this to load. And let's show you a bit more about the trucks and tractors. So, what you want to do is approach the truck station just like this. Until it says, load cargo tractor, press F. Of course, I will show you how to do this automatically a bit later on. So, you won't have to do this manually every single time. And don't worry if that crater misses, it does still go into the tractor. And there we go, it should be fully loaded right now. Go down the road into your next docking station. And as long as you've set this truck station to unload, you have to get here, press the F button, and there you go. Your tractor, truck, or whatever vehicle you're using is now unloading. Wow, isn't that amazing? And of course you can double check, brilliant, okay, that's fine. Is it coming out of here? It is great. And also what you could do, which I almost somewhat recommend using, is that whenever you have an unloading station, you then add a splitter from here, just like so. This way you don't have to place down two truck stations right next to each other, one for the fuel and one not. But of course, there might be some scenarios in which you've got multiple truck stations in a row where you're loading a resource onto a truck or tractor. That is why I recommended doing that first tip if you are in one of those situations. But if you're not, do this instead. But of course, this is not Ultimate Truck Simulator 2027. This is satisfactory, so you might want to spend the entire day on a tractor or a truck. So let's talk a bit more about automatic driving, and this is extremely easy, trust me. All you have to do is press the Q button on your controller, and then press the Start Recording button right there. After you do that, you are recording, and you should be able to see that right there in the bottom right of your screen. And when you go forward, there will now be an arrow that comes underneath you. Now, obviously, you keep going until you get to your next truck station, which is this one for us. I'm going to press the Load button. Beautiful, nice until you loop back around to where you started. Then it should be doing everything automatically, but there's a couple more settings you have to change first. So, right there, path recording completes. Brilliant. Now you press the Q button, enable autopilot, and you just hop out the vehicle, and eventually away it should go. And there we go, I am not doing anything, and there goes the tractor. <laughs> Unfortunately, sometimes your tractor will get stuck, that's just the way of the game. As you can see, I am currently not driving the tractor, yet it's still unloading, loading, and doing everything it has to. And essentially, that is really it. And again, we can see that this is working, so this is definitely efficient. If today's video was able to help you guys out, please make sure to subscribe. I upload videos like this pretty much every single day now. So if you do need help with anything in Satisfactory, let me know in the comments down below, and hopefully I'll make a video covering it. But before we go, a massive thank you to our members, Mau Mau, Skull and Hattie, Lo, Natormal, Chaos Rising, Cutthroat Zoo, Yami Kel, and Tio Rico.